Hey guys, check it in Maine, Debu.com with a Debu.com forecast update. This forecast update effective around 10.45 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Thursday, August 30th, 2018. And okay guys, if you've been following along and you've read and saw our last video update uh, that we did three days ago, Atlantic Heating Up, here we go into this real-time phase. Starts you off with the latest out of the National Hurricane Center. This is the 8 a.m. update with this feature that moved off Africa uh, overnight. Now at a 90% chance of development, the National Hurricane Center will probably start issuing advisories at 11 a.m. Uh, this morning for the Cape Verde Islands. Uh, tropical storm watches uh, may go into effect. Now, if you've been following along, yes, we've got an eye on this. This is setting up possible surf alert for uh, our surfers here coming up in the extended forecast. If you're tuning in for the first time, we are primarily a surf and maritime forecast, but uh, the surf forecast also uh, tends to happen when we have tropical cyclone development. So if you've been following along, there's another feature that we've been tracking, and that is now over Puerto Rico. And this is part of a tropical wave uh, that's moving through the eastern Caribbean. And uh, the models have been, the European model has been very, very consistent. If you saw our last video, we talked about it in that. But the GFS had been shy over the last four to five days. It started off trying to show something. Well, it started coming back last night a little bit. And it looks like there's going to be a fight to break out between the two models at the 12Z run. And uh, that will happen around uh, noontime uh, is when it will start to load. And uh, the European model doesn't come out till around 3 o'clock, so we won't be able to have a chance to see that until around 3 o'clock. But the difference between the GFS and the Euro right now is the GFS wants this main vorticity spin here along the main axis of the wave to move in here and then possibly up through the Yucatan Channel and develops weak low pressure in the central Gulf of Mexico, right about right in here. That's what the model is showing currently. The European model has been on this since day one. And if you saw our last update, we talked about what we're going to be watching for right now in real time. Our video was three days ago, so here we go in this real time. We're watching for this spin to try and slip up through Mona Passage and then ride the north coast in here and get into the Bahamas. Okay? So you can see the trajectory already starting to set up with the system. Here's this, although it's cloudless in here, notice how there's like a little donut hole right here? And looks like there's another donut hole right here. Okay, so this is, the, the flow is starting to get like this because this is moving out of 40 knots worth of shear here over the last 48 hours, and now shear is dropping 25 to 30 knots in here. Now, that's still a little strong, but don't think that it can't find a better environment to try and spin up. So there's lots of questions coming up here in the next 48 to 72 hours, but you can already see what the euro sees. The euro wants to move the spin up into here, and if we put this into motion for you, you can see how the pattern is already setting up because when we go to look ahead, we go to look at what the upper pattern is. And now we've got to deal with the front. And the rule of thumb is always watch tail ends of fronts along stalled or dying fronts for an area of low pressure to develop. So in all, although you're looking at this image and this image is still, the atmosphere is fluid. So if I put this into motion for you, this is what this looks like. You've got a little wrap like this. So a little cyclonic flow because the jet stream is like this. The front's coming through. This is trying to wrap down like this. And guess what? It's an upper level low that's riding in here. And what's going to end up happening is, as that upper level low spins like this, and this has got a little vorticity spin like this, you've got the incoming system coming through the Bahamas, and this is likely right in here. I'm going to go slow over this because I pinned this on my tweet. I pinned on my tweet deck. This is pinned. This is likely the location of where the consolidation process would likely start according to the European model. So this is where we're going to be watching. We've already pinned this. It looks like the, this is the Europeans on it. I can tell you that. 
Um, you know, GFS, not a lot of confidence in the last three months in that model. Although I will give the GFS credit, it does see this right now. Okay, so I'm not ruling it out that that can't happen, but it looks like the euro's on it because it's been on it for days. So here's, here's where that likely consolidation point is. Going to move through the Bahamas, probably through South Florida, and then we got to start looking where's next. And when you start looking where's next, if this enters through here, you can see it in the, in the, uh, in the loop imagery. You can see how this is going to set up right in here. And then you've got this like this. And then now this flow, that's why we call this the apex in here, because now you're going to have this flow that's like this. And this is going to allow for something to try and wrap up right in here. Okay, so I want to back up just a minute and take you back to August 21st to show you how this latest pulse that we're going through and, and what looks to be a, a, um, an active phase coming up in the Atlantic, how this all evolves. So this is August 21st, and I'm going to start advancing this for you. And you'll notice that over Africa in here, notice this curvature like this. And like this, it almost looks like a comma, doesn't it? Okay, let me take you to the 23rd because this is where this pulse enters the Atlantic arena. And it typically starts off with this, a little cyclonic or northeast flow like this. And then you've got the westerly flow up underneath of the intertropical convergence zone. And as I move you to the 24th, you'll see as this moves off, let me back that up one. See how that moved off? And it starts to take on the shape of a bow, like a bow and arrow, okay? And I'll move you to the 25th, and here it is in the Central Atlantic. And at this point in the National Hurricane Center's discussion, which, by the way, the National Hurricane Center's not mentioned not one thing about this. Since it moved off Africa, uh, when we talked about it in our video about getting past the 50 long line, so here we go into the 26th, and you can see it's approaching the Eastern Caribbean, another tropical wave moving off the coast of Africa, okay? And then this bend here like this. This is what sets up the train, okay? You see how that is? So now you got the flow like this. Flows up like this, flows up like this. And now you got everything moving out into the Atlantic. 27th, 28th, 29th, which was yesterday, to where we are today, which is here. Now we've got the 90% chance of development here that's moved off the coast, which is in here. And that's going to end up being likely a fish storm at the moment. Don't hold us to it. Don't shoot the messenger. But you can already start to see where it's going. And I'll point that out right here. Let me back that up just a little bit. And this is going to set up possible surf alert coming because uh, uh, probably 15 to 18 second swell periods coming with this. But here's where the system is likely going to end up going as it moves off. Here to here. And then that's why you see that curvature to here. Now it looks like in the, in, in the models it lifts it up into here. High pressure building here guys east southeast swell building here joining forces puts that swell heading our way here i would say within the next seven days now with this system that's coming out of puerto rico i know you guys are going to hate it but onshore winds every day every day it's not going to be until we get the swell from this where there may be some lighter onshore flow and maybe some offshore conditions, but it looks like surf alert is definitely setting up. Okay, switch you over to last night's run of the European model, and this is going into 96 hours, and pay attention down here, down on the right, where we told you where the likely location for consolidation process would likely occur. That's right down in here to, into the Bahamas. This goes into day five now. And you can see moving across South Florida, day six, into the northeast central Gulf, and day seven in here towards Louisiana. 
And here's a look at the uh, uh, 00Z GFS last night uh, showing it in the Central Gulf. And here's what it looks like in the motion. This is today's visible satellite imagery. And as you can see, the main vorticity spin is right here. And it's moving off this way. So that's what the GFS is kind of locked onto. And again, we can't see it. It's just kind of out of frame in here. But if you look, there's a spin that looks like it's trying to start to develop north of Puerto Rico. Let me pull this up. And then you get a chance to look into here, and you can see how this curvature that's in here, this is setting up for receivership of this little vorticity spin that's starting to develop right here. That's all we got for you for now, guys. We will be doing a text update on Daboo.com on the swell forecast. Um, we're going to be stepping up all the way through Labor Day weekend. Uh, reminder, it looks like rip current risk along the southeast U.S. coast is going to be increasing substantially uh, over the next week to 10 days. So keep that in mind for those who have, and possibly the Gulf of Mexico, keep that in mind for those who have holiday plans coming up over the weekend. Thanks for following.